Max, I was trained in neuroscience, but I've followed cosmology, your work for years. And at the beginning, when we talked about parallel universes or multiple universes, it was exciting, it was, uh, it was startling, it was uh, controversial, and almost certainly total speculation. Fast forward to today, it's conventional wisdom. Everybody talks about them as though it's ev everybody has always assumed them. Do you really believe there are multiple universes? To me, the most exciting question actually isn't whether there are parallel universes, but how many different <laughs> levels of parallel universes there are. Our universe, by that we simply mean not all of space, but the three-dimensional mm -hmm. part of space that light has had time to reach us from so far during the 13.8 billion years. This, which we've photographed the edges of with our best telescopes. And I don't have a single colleague in astrophysics who thinks that, that space actually ends here at the edge. They all think that if you waited another billion years, you would see some more galaxies that light right from us. The question is, how far does it go on? If it goes on forever, which people like Alan Guth have argued based on inflation theory, we have a vast level one multiverse, which is so huge that there probably are even other copies of us and all sorts <laughs> of other wild and crazy things. And as if that wasn't big enough, there can also be a, a level two multiverse. You know, this whole infinite space then would have come from one single big bang. Right. And uh, there could be other big bangs that made other ones which are in practice impossible to travel to, where, where there's more diversity, where even uh, some of the apparent laws of physics we learn in school are different, which could help solve a lot of uh, outstanding puzzles we encounter, like dark energy and so on. It would explain why we have just exactly the right value needed for life, because in this whole multiverse, it's only in places like that where the cosmological constants <laughs> gets measured and people ask. And then it's just turned out to be so hard to come up with any fundamental physics theory that predicts the existence of only what we see in here and nothing else, that also when we've studied the micro world, quantum mechanics, we found that it gives us a third level of parallel universes where we can effectively be in several places at once, and except there is a sort of censorship mechanism preventing us from realizing these things. And uh, if we can one day build enormous quantum computers that can calculate things which we think should take longer than the age of the universe, the best way to understand them is that those machines will actually be tapping into this <laughs> level three multiverse. So those are the three kinds of parallel universes which are taken somewhat or very seriously now, depending on who you ask. And the main critique against them has actually shifted from being, oh, this makes no sense <laughs> and I hate it, <laughs> uh, to being, I hate it. <laughs> so now we can actually talk about this seriously at science conference. Yeah. All right, level four. This is where you've, uh, you've put your stake in the ground. So this is the most controversial kind, where I am one of the very few proponents of it. And uh, if indeed our universe is completely mathematical, then uh, what you can do is you can, in principle, write a computer program which just churns out the list of all mathematical structures. And uh, you will find there the simple ones that we know and love, like the cube and the dodecahedron and various kalabi yau manifolds and Hilbert spaces and all sorts of stuff. And somewhere on that list should be the mathematical structure that we are in now. And uh, what we have to remember about mathematical structures is that they cannot be created because they don't exist in some kind of space and time. Rather, space and time exists within some of them the mathematical structure of Minkowski space, which Einstein used for his space time. It has <laughs> space and time in it, you know. So they all just exist. And if there are other ones that which can also support life and intelligent, self-aware observers who talk about things and think, they're going to feel just as real in theirs as we feel in ours. And this ultimately means then that our reality isn't just purely mathematical, but also vastly grander than we thought. So what, what does that literally mean in terms of all consistent mathematical structures would be realized, uh, actualized in some kind of reality? Uh, we have our reality here. There are mathematical formulations. We have of quantum mechanics, general relativity, electron structure, structure of the nuclear, all, all of that, which are mathematical. 
Now, what would it mean to have another kind? It's proven very difficult to make mathematical structures fully consistent, and mathematicians sometimes publish papers just to prove that something is consistent. But it means that if, for example, string theory turns out to actually be a consistent mathematical structure and yet not describe this world, then <laughs> string theorists are still correct in the sense that it really describes a different level f universe at level four. It's just not the one we happen to inhabit. So our quest to figure out fundamental physics has to be thought of differently. When we measure the number eight, the number of planets in our solar system, we now know that that eight doesn't tell us anything basic about reality. It tells us something about what solar system we're in, yeah. the one with eight planets, right. not the one with three that we discovered yeah. yesterday. Yeah. So that eight is part of our cosmic zip code, so to speak. And uh, what I'm saying is that, in fact, everything else that we've measured about our reality, too, that it is, in fact, string theory or not, you know, how many quarks there are, and so on, are also telling us not something about the full reality, which is simply the reality of all the mathematical structures, but it's part of our address. We're learning something about ourselves. And uh, what I think is very encouraging about it is it actually opens up a second front of exploration that we humans can do. In addition to using telescopes to look out farther and microscopes and the col particle colliders to look inward, we can also start this quest from the other side by look having a computer program that starts mapping out the entire mathematical landscape mm. and saying, well, we clearly can't be living over here because none of this has the properties of our world and that doesn't work too. But, oh, this is a kind of charming mm -hmm. little neighborhood. Maybe we're in here somewhere, yeah. you know. And maybe these two quests, so the outward search with telescopes and such and the inward search by looking at this entire atlas that the mm -hmm. computer can give us with from math studies can ultimately meet. Yeah. And we can realize, ah, now we know where we live.